Hello, hello. I hope you're all well today. I hope you are having a wonderful day so far. Uh, I'm aware that I'm perched at a very strange angle currently. I'm kneeling on one leg and I was like, I want to film my intro so that you can see me and then see my IKEA cabinet. But I realised I haven't given you an up-to-date tour of my IKEA greenhouse cabinet in about seven months and oh my goodness, ow. Oh my goodness, so much has changed in there since the last time I showed you it. I have transitioned lots of plants in and out. I've added some new plants to my cabinet. I've just played about with a few different things in there. So I thought, as I say, I would spin the camera around and just take you through everything and give you some updates, show you what's working, what's not, and just give you a tour. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, it's not perfect, there are still plants here and there that have got issues and things I would like to improve on, but on the whole, I am really, really happy with it. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So before we get into the tour, I was just quickly going to say, if you've got questions about cabinet growing, if you want to know a little bit more about it, like why people do it, what the benefits of it are, the pros, the cons, all that sort of stuff, I have made a specific breakdown video on this, hopefully answering all of those questions. So I will link that down below. But yeah, apart from that, I will also link below everything that I've used myself to set up my cabinet. So if you want to do it yourself at home, then you can. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the tour. So this is just an overview of what my cabinet is currently looking like. As you can see, it's very, very full in there. I keep thinking I should probably try and transition some things out of my cabinet to free up a bit of space, but oh God, it's then just finding the space for them in the rest of the room, isn't it? But anyway, let's get in there. You'll be able to hear the door is a little bit squeaky and needs an oiling. Also, I haven't cleaned my cabinet in several weeks, so you are seeing it very much in kind of like realistic setup. I haven't made it look lovely specifically for this video. Uh, we also might encounter some pests and some fungus gnats because I'm aware that they are currently present in here. But anyway, let's start down this little corner here with, oh my goodness, one of my favourite plants. I'm sure I'm going to be saying that about lots of them, but this is the Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor. And I got this one when I went to Bath, I think probably about three or four months ago now. And I have grown the Aglaonema Pictum Tricolor before and I didn't get on very well with it. I actually found it quite a difficult plant. But this time around, I'm honestly, it's been an absolute dream and it is loving life in my cabinet. As you can see, it has got a new leaf coming just there. Uh, and I am growing this one in semi-hydro at the moment. So I've got just Oh, a little reservoir at the bottom of the pot that I keep hydrated. And apart from that, I really don't do a lot to it. Um, I might actually move some of these out as we go so that I can clear a bit of space to show you other things. But yeah, in fact, you can see it a little bit better in this light. Just look at those colours. Isn't it gorgeous? Um, and then this one here, this is a variegated variety of the Colia Samboinicus, and I got this at the most recent London plant swap. This one, I've spoken about it before, but the Cuban Oregano Mexican Mint that I am currently growing up there on one of my window shelves has become one of my favourite plants, and one of you very kindly brought me a cutting of the variegated one, and it's growing amazingly. I've just got it in sphagnum moss at the moment, and you might be able to tell as we go through, I've tried to kind of disguise a lot of these plastic cups because I don't think they look particularly pretty. So I've just covered some in string and stuck them down, uh, which seems to be working quite well, apart from the fact that this one's a little bit tall. Uh, but yeah, very excited about that one. Um, and then on a similar thread, this one, although is very similar, I believe, to the Coleus and Voinicus, it's actually what's known as Anchuan leaf. And I can't remember the... Uh, Latin name for it but I'll put it on the screen and again very excited about that one uh, and then I showed you this one in my rare plants video the other day this is an Episcia capria or cupriata I think actually um, and again actually this is another plant spot one and it's just a very very unusual one and it's one that I wasn't familiar with before the last London plant swap if I can find a picture to put on the screen of what it looks like when it's big and mature I'll try and do that because 
yeah, it's just gorgeous. And the venation it's got is stunning. It's got that beautiful kind of pink tinge to it without being like too kind of garish and in your face. Uh, and again, it's another one I'm just grabbing in sphagnum moss. I have actually got a little layer of lacquer at the bottom there. Uh, and I use that as just the reservoir and you can see it is rooting down into that. Uh, currently, it's not very filled, but that's how I'm monitoring the plant. And then, oh my goodness, okay, I've got a couple of exciting begonias, but this is one that I have briefly shown you before. This is a begonia 0U062, I think. Um, it's a very unusual one. And this is one of the first, I mean, first, I was going to say first begonias, but first plants that I've enjoyed growing in my collection that actually isn't isn't a green one. It has got a beautiful kind of pinky reddish tinge to it. And I wanted to get this one because I was so in love with the Begonia Sinbad, which looks actually very similar in form and texture to this one, but it's um, it's more kind of like silvery green. But yeah, this is another one I'm growing in no drainage. You'll see a lot actually that I am now growing in no drainage. Uh, and it seems really, really happy in here. And it's putting out so much new growth. Like, look at all of that. So yeah, it's clearly very happy in there. And it's one that I'm really enjoying growing. I should probably stake it at some point soon. But for the time being, that's that's what it's looking like. Uh, and before we come on to very exciting things over there, this one here. This is the Anthurium bulletus. And oh. I feel a little bit at my wit's end with this plant, if I'm being honest. I wanted this anthurium for such a long time. Um, and again, if I can find a picture and put it on the screen of what it looks like when it's mature, I will put that on the screen because uh, like, it's just the most gorgeous, lobey, amazing anthurium. But I don't seem to be able to get it to do that for me. And the only one leaf it did give me like that died off very quickly. So yeah, it's currently just got this one lone leaf. It's... It's fine, it's not dying off, but I mean like it's not looking, I don't know, it's just looking a little bit sparse. So if any of you have any tips with this one, I would be really grateful because I'd love to be able to bring out the best in it, but currently I just don't feel like I am doing that. Uh, and then just behind it, I've just got some Pothos Enjoy cuttings. I accidentally knocked that section off my Pothos Enjoy that I've got up there. I accidentally knocked some sections of it off when I was watering it the other day so I put them in that and that's just a little container that I picked up at a charity shop the last time I was there which I thought was quite pretty um and then down there behind it there's not a lot to show but that is a Anthurium papillomanum hybrid of some sort that was so prone to pests I ended up just completely chopping the whole thing back so currently you can't really see much of it um but yeah I'm hoping when it starts to regrow it will be a little bit healthier uh, and then this one, I have spoken about this one so many times before. In fact, I'll show you its newest leaf because its newest leaf is gorgeous. This is the Alocasia Green Shield. And foliage wise, this is one of my favourites. This is one that I really adore, but I just, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of the way it grows, if I'm being honest. Like it's very, if I take it out, you can kind of see it's very, um, stemmy <laughs> like it's a it's not a very compact alocasia which is okay but it doesn't seem to be able to get out of the three leaf club uh and in fact up until the other day it did have four leaves but then as soon as this lovely new one unfurled the 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 what am i saying the oldest leaf looked like it was starting to die off and then i did actually chop it back so yeah, some of you said that before, maybe it's because it didn't have enough space to grow. And I did change it out to this pretty massive container in semi-hydro. And its roots have really spread. But so far, yeah, so far, nothing has really changed apart from that. Um, so, so yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. I think, uh, I, I, as I say, I love its leaves. They're so cool and they're so kind of alien-y, but it is one that I'm kind of maybe reconsidering at some point. I was actually planning on getting rid of this one a while ago um, and I chopped it back, put it in a prop box, but then when it regrew, I was like, oh my God, I love it. So yeah, I'm kind of back in that place of maybe I get it back in the box and see how I feel. Uh, but yeah, um, then at the back, I've got a little section of the philodendron tortum. This is fully rooted. And in fact, I've kept this one back to pot in with my mother plant, which is over in the kitchen, just because I want to fill her out a little bit. 
Uh, and then here I've got my Alocasia Sinuata, which is doing so well. This is another one that I chopped back to kind of reset at one point. And as you can tell, it has sized up hugely and has given me really quite big growth now. Um, I'm a little concerned. And in fact, I'm not going to touch the actual sections, but I'm a little concerned about these bits here because I think they might be fungal. Um, so yeah, I think on my list probably today should be to chop these leaves back and give it kind of a gentle fungicide treatment it might not be but often when you see like those bit oh, I don't know how to describe it like if you ever see a hole in an alocasia leaf like a random hole that's often fungal and these look like they might be the start of little holes forming um yeah that was what my gut would be saying to do uh, and then, oh my goodness, you guys, this is one that I haven't shown you before. And I'm going to take this one out. I'm going to show you it properly because this is such a wish list plant. I've only had this one a few days and it's a begonia chlorosticta. Uh, I have wanted this begonia. When I say for such a long time, obviously it hasn't been that long because I haven't been into begonias for that long. But since I started getting into begonias and I started looking into different species of begonia, I was like, oh my goodness, this one feels like there's just something, I don't know, something very unusual about it. And it's got these beautiful kind of iridescent velvety leaves. And in fact, if you see it in different lights, you can't really, this light isn't picking it up that well. Um... But yeah, it has got a beautiful sheen to its leaves. Uh, and I was a little bit worried about this one because I got it on Etsy and I ordered it from abroad. And I was like, that is risky. That's always a little bit risky with kind of very sensitive plants. But at this time of year as well, as the temperature's dropping and it was in the post for like six days, I was like, is it going to be OK? Uh, and obviously it is relatively early days, but it has acclimated really, really well so far. Uh, as I say, I know we're only on day three or four, so it is early days, but it's really perky. It lost a couple of leaves in transit, but I'm not too worried about that. It's got this beautiful leaf just there and these little ones down here as well, which are just starting to kind of emerge with lots of growth points as well. There's lots and lots on the stem here. So, so yeah. This is one that you might be thinking, if you've literally just got it and it's come from abroad, why have you got it in your cabinet, Claire? Uh, and I was just thinking, honestly, I was just thinking about the best thing for the plant. I know, obviously, pest-wise, you do have to be very careful when you bring new plants into your collection. But this is such a special plant to me and one that I don't want anything to happen to. I was like, you know what? This, my cabinet is a stable, humid, warm environment with very good light. I just want to make sure that the plant is is happy. So yeah, no regrets. Um, also on the note of light, I know I've said it before, but I use mother grow lights in my cabinet. I will link them down in the description box below. In fact, I think I might have a discount code for them. I can't remember, but I will link it down below. Um, but yeah, this one, I just, I'm, I'm obsessed with it at the moment. Absolutely obsessed. So uh, yeah, stay tuned there maybe more exciting things coming with that plant well when i say that i basically one of the reasons i got this plant is because and in fact i should not have it right next to the plant i just said could have something fungal going on with it um but one of the reasons i got this begonia is because i'm i'm i've never tried it but i'm quite interested in begonia hybridization it's something i'd quite like to try at some point and this one does seem to make beautiful beautiful hybrids so who knows whether or not that will actually happen and I'm actually going to be able to succeed with that. But that is something that I am quite excited by. Uh, but then coming back down here also, um, just a note on this, because this is a pot that I actually made quite recently. I'm thinking I might do another pot making video at some point. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see something like that. I've got several. I know I've already shown you the kind of DIY things like this. Um, this was, I mean, originally this was just like, I think it was a, a white ceramic pot. Um, you'll see a few DIY things. There's another one there, in fact. Uh, but you'll see a few things as we go through. So if you want a full video on that, let me know and I will happily, happily make it. Uh, but then this little one, I showed you this one in my rare and unusual plants video the other day. This is the Hoya SP Tendon Red. And obviously from the front, it doesn't look like a huge amount, but you turn it round and just look how beautiful that is. I love 
that kind of maroony main vein that runs up it. It is so pretty. Uh, and yeah, it's a really unusual Hoya and one that I don't know many other people that are growing it. I'm very excited and feel very privileged actually to be able to grow it. So yeah, I've currently just got it in a no drainage system. Again, semi-hydro. Oh, God, this is dirty. Um, semi-hydro on the bottom and then just a chunky soil mix going up. And that seems to be keeping it happy so far. I'm just really excited about this one. I know it is a slow grower and it is going to take some time, but yeah, I'm just really looking forward to growing it long term. Uh, and then this is a little section of my Hoya Wilbur Graves. And again, I did a similar thing just with a cup just to hide this cup. Um, this one is doing OK. Uh, I chopped up my Wilbur Graves about six months ago now, I think. And I did actually take some cuttings to plant swaps and stuff just because it's a Hoya that I thought I was going to just be obsessed over. When I first got it, I was like, oh, my God, this is a wishlist plant. I can't I can't wait to grow it. And I don't know. I really like it, but I haven't been as like, I don't know. I think basically what I'm saying is I needed to kind of reset the plant, reroot the plant and try again from scratch because I don't feel like I was having a great time with it before. So this is the cuttings that are in fact very, very rooted now and could be potted up. Um, and I'm going to start again. I'm going to get it on a trellis and hope that it does good things. Uh, but yeah, for the time being that's where it is. Um, and then I've got a little papillolaminum. I'm pretty sure this is actually a pure papillolaminum. Um, I know I've had a few comments from you guys saying, oh no, it would be lighter or it would be darker. And I've got a few of these in my cabinet. And as you can see, I mean, we'll get to them in a minute, but they are all growing in slightly different ways depending on their lighting conditions, because I've got some out of the cabinet as well that are growing again, very differently. Um, but this one is currently just in sphagnum moss. Oh, new little leaf coming just there as well uh oh I thought that was a thrip but no I don't think it is um but yeah this one I I don't know I'll pot it up at some point soon it's definitely ready now so for the time being it's just living there uh oh little roster weird creation there you'll see a few of those um but this is my allocation mellow that I chopped back a little while ago and yeah, currently it's just in sphagnum moss and it's doing fine. That leaf hasn't died off, but the other ones did. I think I might have accidentally overwatered it because I did lose some leaves. But I just think this one is stunning. Like the texture of the leaves is just absolutely amazing. It's so, again, like I know I've already used the word, but like so alien and weird. And like, I don't know, it's just a really cool one to feel as well. Like it's very satisfying. Um, and this is another kind of little DIY pot thing. This is like, I don't know, I've got really into the look of vintage terracotta recently, but for some reason, buying vintage terracotta is really expensive. So I've been thrifting a lot. I've been just like looking at different places. And this one is one that I actually got for 99p at a garden centre. Um, and I just made it look kind of vintagey. So again, if you want a pot video, then let me know. Uh, another little DIY pot just there as well. Um, and then, yes, in here, as I say, these are more of the papillolaminum seedlings that are, I mean, really sizing up quite nicely. I'm not going to take them all out and show you because they all look the same. Um, or not all the same, but you know what I mean. Like They're all, they're just seedlings. Um, but yeah, again, I should probably pop them up. That one has got a beautiful, beautiful leaf. Uh, and then this little one up here, this is a Hoya David Cumming Eye. And again, I don't think I'm growing it in the best way. It's just been growing like this pretty much since I got it, to be honest. And yeah, I think I should probably pot it up and do a little bit more with it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Hoya Rosita. It's got a lot of similarities, but I believe it's their blooms that are really quite different. Uh, yeah, it's not one, to be honest, it's not, it's one that I'm kind of caring for more out of habit at the moment I feel like it's yeah I'd be lying if I said it was one that was really exciting me but I think at some point it might be so that's why I've still got it I know that's not the best reason but um yeah there it is 
Uh, and then this is the Hoya Kalimantan. And this one, so I absolutely love this Hoya. Uh, and when I did my, my full houseplant tour video, which I think was about six or seven months ago now, this one had some new growth coming on it. And I accidentally knocked off the new growth. And in fact, I knocked over the whole tube and the whole thing spilled out and the new growth point died back. And since then, it hasn't given me any growth at all. You can tell it has sun stressed a little bit here and it's looking quite pretty. Um, but yeah, no new growth whatsoever. So I'm just kind of keeping it like this. I think maybe again, I should change it up a little bit and play about with some new things and see if I can spark some growth that way. But it's just sun stressing under the grow light here for the time being and doing pretty well. Uh, and then next to it, so again, all, oh God, the same thing almost just happened again. <laughs> But then next to it, this is another one that I showed you in my rare plants video the other day. This is one that, again, at the beginning of the year was looking very different. Uh, and it is the Drymonia Chiribagana. And this is another really unusual, very exciting plant that I've got in my collection that I have, again, completely chopped back just because I was having issue after issue after issue. But it is now regrowing from multiple points and I'm really excited about it. So although... It's not a huge amount to see at the moment. I really hope it will bounce back. It is such a fast plant to grow once it gets going. Like when it was growing really fast at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh my God, I was like, it's literally giving me a new leaf every other day, which I know sounds like an exaggeration, but it really was just going crazy. So, um, so yeah, I'm just keeping it with this little thing for extra humidity on top. And again, right under the grow light seems happy. Um, yeah, not a huge amount to say about that one again at the moment, but I do hope that I'll have some exciting updates on it soon. Oh, and then in here, so this is a, God, I've been meaning to separate everything in this pot for such a long time and I just haven't done it. Um, but I've got a myriad of things. I've got some Distridia watermelon. Uh, is it Distridia watermelon? Yeah, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, then I've got some Hoya carii, which is growing nicely and is starting to tendril upwards. These are from my friend Lottie's plants. I went to stay with her a little while ago and she gave me some cuttings. Uh, and I said at the time, I was like, oh, I better separate these ones quick or they're going to be a nightmare to separate. And that was, oh dear, maybe five months ago. Um, and then some... This is Hoya and I can't remember what it is. Hoya Serpens, that's what it is. Uh, which again, as you can see, has got some lovely little bits of new growth just there as well. So yeah, I should really take some time to try and untangle all those roots and get them potted up as individual plants. Because also look at that one. The Dyschidia is climbing the back of my cabinet and is really looking for somewhere to go. Um, and then this one, I'm going to have to put the name of this one on the screen because I can't remember what it's called. Oh my God, look at that. Isn't that just perfect? Um, but this is one I got from one of you guys at the Bristol plant swap that I went to. Uh, and originally it was just that one leaf. And the lovely person that gave this to me said at the time, I've been trying to get it to root for months. It's not doing anything. And when I brought it back, to be completely honest, I was like, if this plant roots, I will be amazed. Like if it does anything, I'm going to be really happy. But I think it's probably going to die. And for months, it just looked floppy and horrible. And that leaf looked like it was on its way out. And then all of a sudden, I know noticed that it had perked up and a little growth point had appeared and now it's it's giving me amazing growth as I say that leaf is just incredible um but yeah again it's another one that needs to be upgraded because this one this one in fact can probably come out of the cabinet uh and yeah needs a trellis because again it is oh my god look at that oh my god they're all going up to the next level no guys come down um but yeah it it needs something changing but it's beautiful. I love it. Uh, so yes, that is everything on the bottom level. But coming up to the top, let's start here. This is, um, oh, what is this? This is Hoya Australis, I believe. And I've got a Hoya Australis just here, which, oh my God, it's a bit dusty. That's embarrassing. Um, but yeah, that one's trailing down the side of my cabinet. And it started putting out loads of little sections of growth a while ago. And I was like, instead of just letting that one go wild, I was like, I, it really needs a trellis. But I was like, what I'll do is I'll take some cuttings, chop them up, propagate them. Uh, and I propped them in tree fern fibre, actually. And that was my first time doing that. And it worked really, really well. I've only potted them up in 
the last kind of three weeks and again they're doing brilliantly you can see some new little bits of growth starting to come up there so again this is another one that will probably appreciate a trellis at some point soon uh but again for the time being i'm gonna just pop this down here to clear some space uh, and then just behind it, I have got my Alocasia heterophylla, my Dragon's Breath. And this has got to be one of my favourite Alocasias. I think it is just stunning. And finally, I feel like we're back on track with this plant because I got this one at Malvern over the summer, the RHS Malvern Spring Show, which was so much fun. And I'm so excited to go again next year. Uh, but I picked this one up when I was there. It was a wishlist plant. And it was only a teeny tiny thing when I got it. And it gave me quite a big leaf quite early on, like bigger than this one. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, the plant is really sizing up. And I was like, if that's the first leaf it's given me, what is the next one going to be like? And the next ones after that were really quite small. Um, and I couldn't really figure out what was going on with the plant. So again, I chopped it back. Uh, and then it gave me this leaf. And I was like, okay. I was like, although this isn't as big as before, as in big as the huge one I feel like we're on the right track now um and yeah this is its most recent one and it does seem to slowly be starting to size up again so long may that last I have just upgraded its pot as well so it is now still in semi-hydro um but it is now in a much bigger container where the roots can kind of spread a little bit more so I hope that will help uh these things I've said it recently but one of you guys actually made me aware of this. These are food storage containers and they're just great for no drainage. If you don't want like a jar top, like if you look at the plant behind, it's got a jar top and I'm going to have to break that jar in order to get that plant out. Uh, so yeah, these are just a really good solution for that. And in fact, let's take that one out as well so that we can see a little bit better. But then behind it, the one that I just said was in the jar, this is my Syngonium... Chia Pense. And again, I got this from one of you guys. I think this was, in fact, yeah, this was a Bristol plant swap one as well. And this is another one that I've kind of been a bit back and forward with in my time of owning. And not because I don't love the plant, but just because it got, to be honest, it was my own fault. It got a little bit neglected and malnourished. And so I chopped it back. But now it is growing really beautifully for me. Uh, and that's its most recent leaf. And God, I should really be getting this one onto a moss pole. It does want to climb. And it, again, it would probably be absolutely fine out of the cabinet. So that's something on the list. But something that, God, I just like, I'm so out of space. <laughs> so I'm like, maybe it can wait a little bit longer. I don't know. Um, but yes, it's a lovely one. You'd never look at it and think Syngonium. Like, that's what I love about it. It's almost more like a vining anthurium. Uh, and it's just one that makes me really happy. So, yep, need to switch things up soon. But for the time being, it is growing healthily. Uh, and then this one, this is another, obviously, this is another begonia. And this is one, actually, this is one of the ones recently that has had pests and I think let's take it out and have a look I think it is now pest free it was the last time I checked um but it was living through in the bathroom for a little while because it had thrips and we are in that season at the moment we're in the time of year for thrips and when they happen it's very frustrating but there's not a huge amount you can do about it apart from just continuing to pest check pest treat and put the correct measures in place uh, but this is a begonia black forest I believe and I think it's a really lovely one I love its polka dotty leaves uh but yeah you can see like look at that damage there yeah this leaf I think is probably actually on its way out um and again it's another one I'm growing in a similar method with no drainage and it's got gorgeous backs of the leaves yeah in fact they just really don't look very healthy um I am due for a predatory mite delivery as well so I will be reintroducing some predators into my cabinet because currently I've just been treating this one with horticultural soap and neem oil uh, and I haven't seen any pests on it for three three-ish weeks now um and I know I would advise obviously continue to isolate if you possibly can but at the end of the day I also need to think about what the best thing for the plant is in terms of its recovery and a cabinet environment really is the best and it does have the best light and everything so uh in fact now i've got my new grow light set up over there i might be able to create more of a little isolation zone i'm not sure but yeah for the time being it has been back in the cabinet and nothing else around it has been affected which is good 
Uh, but then, oh, next to it, and in fact, I got these off Amazon recently. I know they're a little bit silly, but I thought they were adorable little copper mushrooms. Um, my Alocasia Platinum. This one is another one that I'm going to say is one of my favourites, but it really is just look at that. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just amazing? And this one is constantly giving me new growth. Every new leaf is just getting bigger and bigger. And it's honestly one of my easiest allocations. I think because I've got it in a spot where it's really happy, again, it's in no drainage. It just has given me touch wood, no grief at all, and just grows so beautifully. Like, I could not be happier with this plant. And I just, the colour of it, everything about it, it just ticks. Ooh bit of gutation there uh ticks every single box like it's just so bluey silvery gorgeous absolutely gorgeous um and again this is oh, i know i'm talking about pot stuff and i was saying i'd do a full video on it um but again this is just a way that i found to hide tower pots because like tower pots often stick up out because they're so tall they stick up out of the top of normal pots and they look a little bit naff uh, I've just um, put this little extension on the top so that you can't see that and it kind of just looks like part of the pot which I quite like. Um, but then at the front this is so so this is either an alocasia black velvet or an alocasia ninja and I can't remember what it is it's just one that was in my prop box and I decided to pot up a couple of months ago and I was like yep yeah. I was like I don't know what it is I think it's probably a ninja only because I haven't had a black velvet in my collection for quite a while and I don't know where the corn will have come from um but stranger things have happened I have taken out weird things from my prop boxes before and been very surprised with what grows from them so yeah yeah not sure uh and then this weird one this is one that I got uh in my eastern tropicals order recently and I was really baffled by this because I was like is it an alocasia is it a syngonium what is it like loads of you guys had lots of very random theories and it's one that I actually was not familiar with and it's uh I'm gonna just say caladium but for zom zomathoma or whatever you say um taro and uh in fact it has a better name than that i'll put the name the scientific name on the screen um but yeah it's commonly known as the blue elephant ear and it has the potential to grow absolutely huge and i was a little bit worried about this one when i first got it because within like 24 hours about three of its leaves had died back in fact you can see one just about to die off here as well and i was like oh no it's dying already like is it just going dormant i know caladiums can do that uh, and so I did something that I don't usually do straight away, but I repotted it and got it straight into semi-hydro. And already you can see its roots are just going crazy in there. And it's only been a couple of weeks uh, and it has just given me that lovely new leaf. So I think cabinet life is treating this plant well. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited to see what it does next because it can get very, very big. Uh, where we will put it when it gets very, very big, I don't know. But again, that's another bridge we can cross. Um, and then I've got a mystery peperomia here. I did know the name of this one at some point and I can't remember what it is. I'm pretty sure it begins with an R. So again, I will put it on the screen, but look at all the little babies there in the middle. It's a very pretty one, whatever it is. It kind of looks like the peperomia frost, which is one that I used to grow and absolutely adore. Um, but it's got this kind of maroon veination, which is very nice. Uh, and then this little one, you might think this is an Adansonii, uh, but this is actually a laniata and I've got a few laniatas that I'll show you, Monstera laniata. Uh, and this one is, I think, a mint. Um, and as I say, it does look incredibly similar to the Adansonia, but I believe the difference between the laniata and the Adansonia is that the laniata is a lot more matte and not as shiny and also... I think when it does get its fenestrations, like as it matures and it gets its fenestrations, it kind of, they form in rows more so than the Adansonia. I think I'm right in saying that. Uh, so yeah, I do actually need to get this one onto a moss pole at the moment. It is just in semi-hydro. I don't typically actually grow Monstera in semi-hydro. Uh, so this is a little bit of an experiment. Um, but yeah, it's very pretty. Very pretty, just needs some things doing to it. Uh, and then this is my Peperomia obtusifolia. It is technically variegated, but 
it's not highly variegated. It's got a few little sections in there that are more variegated, which in fact have kind of come out of the woodwork since I put it into the cabinet. Um, oh yeah, in fact, look at that. Yeah, it gone completely green before that. Um, but there's not a huge amount to say about this one, apart from I really like it and it's really, really easy. I've got it growing in semi-hydro in this lovely little, um, like, I don't know what you call it, a little pot and drainage tray that I got from one of you guys at one of the first plant swaps. And honestly, I love it so much. Um, so yeah, it's one that seems very happy with cabinet life. So I'm just letting it grow and kind of letting it go a little bit wild at the moment. Uh, but behind it, this is my, what's this one called? Schismatical, uh, ooh, tongue twister, Schismatoglossus SP Silver Borneo, I do believe. Uh, this is another one that I struggled with a little bit when I first got. It did have spider mites, and so I've chopped it back and reset it, hence why it is very, very bushy. Oh, is it flowering? Well, you know what? I hadn't even noticed this, but it is, it's flowering. Oh my God. Uh, to be honest, I will probably chop that bloom back just because I don't plan on pollinating the plant. Um, but yeah, it's one that, again, in semi-hydro. Oh, new growth point. Oh my goodness, I'm noticing so many new things. Uh, but yeah, in semi-hydro, it seems very happy and just has the most gorgeous leaves. Like, I do just think Schismatoglottis as a genus has some beautiful, beautiful species within it. Uh, and this one, now that I've got it, kind of under control and in a spot where it's happy does seem to just be growing wonderfully for me with very little very little grief which is good uh and then coming up here i've got uh, i've got a section of the variegated raffidophora tetris burma uh, and i chopped up the mother plant very recently to take cuttings of to the last london plants we went to um the main reason i decided to chop it up was just that a lot of the variegation was really really browning and i i didn't feel i was really enjoying growing the plant it felt a little bit stressful uh, and I, ch I kept one section back for myself just in the event that I changed my mind which is often what I do if I'm not quite sure and it's growing really beautifully it's given me all three of these new beautifully variegated leaves in the time of uh, since then so literally in the last couple of months if that's like three in fact yeah like four weeks um so now I'm like oh god do I grow it again but uh I don't know. So again, undecided, but it's giving me beautiful growth. Uh, and then this is the uh, Discoria SP Peru. And this is a little one that I'm so, so, so excited about. Uh, but I did say in a video the other day, I put it too close, I put it too close to the grow light. I had it there before um, and it burnt a little bit, which I'm a little bit sad about. So I've moved it down. I've clipped it to the back wall of my cabinet and I'm hoping that that should be a little bit better for it. But it is a very, very sensitive plant and it does need to be kept very hydrated at all times. So, yeah, I'm growing it in moss and just making sure that it's constantly, constantly moist. Um, but then up here, this is the Hoya Globulosa Welsh Mountain Zoo. And this one, actually, I have just noticed, has got a new growth point just there, which I'm quite excited about because this one seems to have gone a little bit dormant. It hasn't done anything for me in ages and it's such a cool Hoya it's such an interesting one and it's so like if you look at it up close it's really fuzzy and furry and like I don't know it's just a very satisfying one um, and again I think potentially I'm just not being the best plant parent to this plant I don't think I'm kind of actively trying to bring out the best in it I think it is just one of these ones that I love but I am not paying enough attention to so so yeah um, but the fact it's giving me new growth is very exciting. So I think, again, probably a repot and a retrellis is the best way forward. Uh, and then these two little ones, this one here and there, are two that I showed you the other day. Here I've got some variegated Crassula ovata. You might think this is weird that I've got it in my cabinet, but I've often propagated succulents in my cabinet and had no issues at all. I know it's one that doesn't typically enjoy very high levels of humidity, but because I'm not keeping the substrate particularly wet because I don't want it to rot, it does just seem like quite a good way to get it to put out some growth. So fingers crossed it does that soon. Um, this is another Laniata. This is the Monstera Laniata Albo that I've got here. And oh, I haven't even seen its new leaf yet. Oh, oh, is that a, f oh, it's a sodding full moon leaf, which although looks really, really beautiful, 
Oh my goodness, that's annoying. It means that it will probably die back. It doesn't contain any chlorophyll and I may need to now, oh, I was going to say chop the plant back. Look how small it is. That's going to be difficult to do. Um, right. Okay. We'll come back to that and rethink because yeah, I was hoping it would stay kind of lovely and half moon, half, half moon, half moon variegated like that. Um, yeah, that leaf is essentially doomed and I may need to take action, but for the time being, it can stay up there. Uh, and then this one here, this is just a little random cutting, which again, I do believe I picked up at a plant spot. This is a Skindapsis Trubii Moonlight, and I got rid of my mother plant of this over a year ago now, just because I was like, it is so slow to grow and I don't find it I don't find its growth particularly satisfying, but actually since I've had it right up here in my cabinet, literally like that distance from my mother grow light, it has been growing much quicker. So I think maybe this is just a skin apps that needs really high light in order to thrive. Um, and although I don't, oh, I don't know, I was gonna say I don't see myself getting a full plant again. Maybe I do. But at the moment I'm just enjoying growing this vine of it and I think I'll probably train it to kind of climb somewhere at some point uh but yeah again colors gorgeous and in fact there's there is a similarity obviously it's a vining plant in a completely different genus but there is a similarity in this one and the leaves here if you look at that to the schismatoglottis that i was showing you a minute ago um so yeah it's very pretty and if i stand back i enjoy looking at it so it's staying there for the time being uh, and now this one, this is a, another DIY pot, but not by me. This is a little roster one that Ross has made. Uh, and I will link his Instagram. Go and follow him, guys. He's so talented and he's making me so many lovely things. Uh, we've got like so many half finished creations like everywhere. But this is one that I adore. I think it's so cool. Um, and the Ace Cananthus that's growing in here. I actually can't remember the exact species of Ace Cananthus, but it is variegated. Uh, however obviously has lost quite a lot of variegation as it's grown and I was going to say matured just as it's grown it's actually got smaller um and I've just spotted something that might need dealing with just saw the underside of that leaf and look at that I think that's pest damage uh hadn't noticed that before and can't actually see it oh on other leaves no but that is definitely something. In fact, I'm going to take that leaf off right now. What is that? Looks like it could be thrip damage to me. Yeah, right. I'll give everything a proper look over once I finish filming. Um, so that one. And then this is another Monstera laniata. And in fact, I know I said that that one was the mint. I think this one is actually the aurea. And this one here is the mint. Uh, and again, this one, it's not growing in its in its optimum way. I've got it again in semi-hydro in a little pot that I've revamped. Um, but this one should be on a moss pole. That is absolutely how I should be growing the plant. And I just haven't done that yet. So again, it's another thing on the list. But its leaves are beautiful. And the reason I'm growing it so close to the grow light up here again is because like, if you just look at how variegated it is, it does need very 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 highlight in order to put out new growth and I can see it is putting out new growth which is good uh, there's a little bit of browning there which I'm hoping I think actually that just looks like potential acclimation issues but again I'll give it a proper look over later and then finally yeah finally god whizzed through these um is my Hoya parasitica black margin here in the corner again this one is in a revamped when I say pot I think it's actually an old coffee cup um but this is another one that I chopped back to kind of preserve some of the growth in a while ago it wasn't growing amazingly for me and I just had it in prop boxes for such a long time and now it has grown back filled out and is putting out so much growth look at that little leaf just there uh, and this big long tendril, my God, it's another one that needs to go on a trellis. But yeah, as I say, that is everything currently that I've got in my cabinet. I know it does change a fair amount. And as I say, if you watch my houseplant tour seven months ago, you'll probably see a lot of differences since then. So I will, I'll try and do more cabinet updates because I'm really bad at doing cabinet updates and I don't know why. Um, but if you want to know a little bit more about cabinet growing, as I say, I have got videos that I've made specifically on that. So I will link them down below this video. 
And yes, I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Stay sexy, plant lovers.